President uh, Roosevelt and Winston Churchill plotted the war together uh, yes. uh, immediately after Pearl Harbor, when Mr. Yes. Churchill will be spent 42 days here. In the, the landing of a man on the moon is the most important scientific achievement in perhaps 100 years, certainly the greatest in a century of scientific achievements. That was a very important story. The assassination of a young president before he had much of a chance to make an impact on the country. Apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. Walter Cronkite was one of the most significant figures in news media history uh, in the 20th century, and he, um, he really pioneered a lot of the, the television broadcasting techniques that we see today. And for a lot of people, he personified television journalism. Um, he was the anchor for CBS Evening News from 1962 to 1981. And um, that was a really turbulent time in American history. During that time, he reported on a lot of really um, pivotal events, including the Civil Rights Movement, the Vietnam War, the assassination of John F. Kennedy, um, and many more, more things that are, are really memorable and really sort of defined this generation. The Walter Cronkite Memorial was begun about three years ago. The reason we have the Walter Cronkite Memorial here at Missouri Western is because Walter Cronkite was born in St. Joseph, Missouri. Walter Cronkite was a noted journalist and was known as the most trusted man in America. And the reason for that is he was a journalist with phenomenal integrity. And as opposed to most journalists today, Walter Cronkite was interested in sharing facts, not sharing opinions. And so because he told the facts, people in America trusted Walter Cronkite. If Walter Cronkite said it was true, it was. Most people know, at least of my generation, Walter Cronkite is considered to be the most celebrated journalist of the 20th century. It was important to him to be truthful when he reported. And then he also um, had a very objective and fact-based reporting style that um, gave him that sense of authenticity and honesty that people really came to expect. When I, I moved here about eight years ago, I, I thought really there should be some sort of memorial to him and there really wasn't much in St. Joseph and he actually went back three generations St. Joseph. His grandfather came here in 1890, his father lived here, and then Cronkite was born here and left shortly after his birth. So I thought a fitting memorial would be something that we would be interested in, and we certainly had a nice space here in the Spratt Atrium to do that memorial. And it started off as one exhibit, and now it's more than a dozen exhibits. And since the Cronkite family have been so supportive of this, we have hundreds of one-of-a-kind artifacts, some on display, some in storage, and have gone through now four phases of the memorial. We're in phase four right now. When the Walter Cronkite Memorial began, the first piece was the artwork behind me. Uh, two of our artists, uh, David Harris and Eric Fuson, developed this artwork as an homage to Walter Cronkite. The original exhibit for the memorial was what I call, and it's to my right, the and that's the way it is exhibit, showcasing the 39 leading stories uh, covered while Mr. Cronkite was anchored the CBS Evening News from 1962 to 1981. And uh, we did that, and then we, through the help of uh, Dr. Gordon Mapley and his talented staff made a, a kiosk, an interactive kiosk with videos reflecting uh, information on each of those stories, first in terms of Cronkite's coverage of the story at that time, and then a retrospective done by Cronkite a number of years later. My effort, I, uh, I had an idea and then sat down with a number of very, very talented people, uh, Dr. Gordon Mapley, uh, the Dean of the Western Institute, who has very savvy when it comes to things technological, and he and his staff added a wonderful technological dimension to just about every exhibit, so they're interactive with interactive videos that people can experience. Uh, the artist in residence, one of the most talented people I know, Eric Fuson, has been the artistic guiding force for the memorial. Originally he started with his colleague, David Harris, who also was a very important force for the memorial. The president and I are out here talking about this project, and the president said, Gordon, um, can you think of something we might do to accompany the artwork? And I 
I said, well, sure. I said, I think my crew over in the IMC can do some things. And why don't we start with a kiosk? And so we developed a kiosk uh, as a companion to this piece of artwork. As we started to look into Walter Cronkite and understand again what events he had covered and kind of the, the impact that he had on um, Americans as a whole and the, you know how well known he was, it, it, it kind of grew and grew. And um, we realized all the events that he had covered were, were major events of the 20th century. I remember exactly where I was when Kennedy was shot. I wasn't alive then, but for a lot of those other events, like Three Mile Island or Patty Hearst or um, you know Vietnam, and, you know I was there, and I do remember his voice, and I remember you know sitting there on the, the couch or in the chair at home and seeing those events coming to me from Walter Cronkite, and to hear his voice again and all that stuff just brought back all of that, and I thought, gosh, if that does that to me, I know it's going to do it to the people that come to see it as well. Well, that was the original, and then it just took off. We developed a timeline wall, a bust of, of, of Cronkite, his coverage of the Vietnam War, uh, a, a, a mini exhibit, uh, a tribute to his, his wife, Betsy, which was very important to his family, uh, a room that we've dedicated to, to our students uh, that's the working newsroom that Cronkite had while well, he was the anchor of the CBS Evening News and on and on, a number of exhibits uh, throughout the memorial, and many yet to come since we have so much uh, in storage right now, again, from the Cronkite family. And as things kept going, you know, we, we, we added um, space up here, literally space, <laughs> um, because that was such an important part. He, he, he wanted to be an astronaut so badly, and, and you know, he would have loved to have done that, but he wanted to also be a pilot in the, in the war, but couldn't because of his vision, you know. The project has just continued to expand and expand and expand until now we have this museum here that has about 6,500 square feet of space and displays, and also we now have three plays that again on, honor the life and the work of Walter Cronkite. And then additionally we've uh, put together three shows, live uh, multimedia shows associated with coming and seeing the memorial, the original show Cronkite, and then Harry and Walter, which is on the parallel lives of Harry Truman and Walter Cronkite, and the most recent show that we're and putting the finishing touches on border. is King and Cronkite, about the intersecting lives of Martin Luther King Jr. and Walter Cronkite. So there's unlimited possibilities here since we've had the complete cooperation of the Cronkite family and, and actually others in giving us one-of-a-kind memorabilia. So I, I think uh, the future is good for the Cronkite Memorial. And so far we've had well over 10,000 visitors since it opened in November of 2013. The Cronkite family are very much supportive of this memorial. And the children have given a number of artifacts from their father's life. So whether it's his desk, his Emmys, uh, photographs that he has uh, with him meeting with famous uh, dignitaries, whether it's personal effects, we continue to accumulate gifts from the family. In addition, beyond the family, others have given us uh, artifacts. There's a museum in Texas that recently gave us a, a huge number of, of items to put on display here. So this room is a replica of the 1970 or so newsroom that Walter Cronkite would have reported for the CBS Evening News. Over here we have a, a camera that is from the era and it's outfitted with a modern camera inside of it so that visitors can come, take a seat here at the desk, pop on Walter's glasses and take their picture, have it printed here in the studio. The horseshoe desk here is a copy of one that Walter Cronkite would have sat at and it, um, it's a horseshoe shape because Walter Cronkite wanted the audience to feel like they understood how the news was made. And so um, this let them feel like they were a part of the action rather than um, Walter Cronkite was sort of separate and just reporting the headlines. And so here we have a couple of phones where you can listen to um, one of Walter Cronkite's reports. We also have his, a stopwatch right here. And this is um, representative of the fact that Walter Cronkite, um, he slowed down his speech so that people could understand what he was saying and really comprehend it. Well, beyond coming to the conference or uh, 
see in the play, one of the things that's happened is because of this memorial, uh, a local individual has pledged a million dollars to be used for student education. None of the money goes to the memorial, all the money goes to students. And the goal is to have a student a year for the next 10 years be able to go to, to New York and work as an intern with CBS to learn more about being a journalist with integrity. These caricatures of Mr. Cronkite were drawn by famous artist and fellow Missourian Al Hirschfeld. We want to do is some, some things about car racing and the boating that he loved to do. Um, but then there's also other stories that are linked to a lot of the news that he would do, such as um, Anwar Sadat, who was the president of Egypt, um, that he kind of met through the story, but then they ended up being friends and actually talked, you know, outside of um, the news, let's say. Um, so there's some really interesting parts to all of that that we'd like to kind of showcase in some of these that we didn't have space for, whether it was on the timeline or in some of the other areas, but maybe um, some kind of snippets into his life. And some Two. I'd like to be remembered as a fella who did his best, as a person who tried to give the news as impartially and factually as possible, and succeeded most of the time.